Welcome to Gregory Creek Homestead, a part of Iredell Museums in Statesville, North Carolina. Once a month, we have living history events to demonstrate life in the late 18th century backcountry of North Carolina. Today, you will learn about materials used to dye fibers and how it was done. In the 18th century, wool and linen were the most common fabrics used. Natural fabrics like these are much easier to dye using natural dyes than synthetic fabrics that were created after the 18th century. Most of these yarns here have been dyed using 18th century dyes. This right here was not, this came off this sheep this color, which made it absolutely a very valuable sheep because it's already a nice dark rich color and it won't ever wash it. But, um, so for example, we have blue, which comes from indigo, the same stuff that's used for blue jeans. And if you want to get a green, the best way to do it is to dye with yellow and then over dye with the indigo. And the shade of yellow is gonna make an impact on the shade of green. There's lots of things that make yellows of some variety. These are all onion skins, which I have a pot of onion skins over there. Um, the yellow in this was made with onion skins, so that's just a belt. Onion skins. Cannons and onions that will help mordant, so you can actually dye linen and cotton with this onion skin. Mordant is a substance that helps the dye adhere to the fibers you are dyeing. Some examples include iron, copper, and alum. I'm going to put a, a uh, relatively non-colored, maybe a little beige, kerchief, linen, in my onion skin bath. Stir it around. I gotta keep stirring it regularly. If I don't stir it regularly, the dye doesn't take evenly. Indigo. It's blue, it's the same stuff, that, but if you notice, it's yellow now. So it was a cash crop in the 18th century. It came in from South Carolina, or it's grown in South Carolina. Eliza Pinckney, actually, who was in, um, from the Caribbean, got, the, got it growing as Is that the main purpose of growing the indigo? Or? Yeah, it, it, it's originally from Japan. Um, but if you noticed, it's yellowish. So the way you got to get indigo, it, it, it's the leaves. If you tried to ship the leaves here, they would mold and melt it. So what they did is they processed it, it and turn it into chunks. Of processed leaves so they would like extract the dye and then they would at the time period have enslaved children beat the surface of it to get oxygen in there and get it turned into the solid then they'd ship it in this form now you got to get it re-dissolved to get it into the books and in the 18th century that involved taking pieces of it crunching it up in a mortar and pestle and then putting it in a vat of fermenting urine like human urine and uh, that's how it re-dissolves. Fibers soak in there thoroughly and then we're gonna pull it out. And I'm gonna put it in my indigo pot. I'm gonna let it soak for about 20 minutes and we're gonna come back and pull it out. Okay, so this is the yarn that we put into the indigo pot a while ago. And if you notice right now, it is not very colored. There's a little bit of a blue skim on the surface because the surface is where the indigo vat touches the air. So watch what happens when I start pulling it out. As we sit longer, we will have the blue fully develop. I'll let it drip. 
it dry. And put something else in the indigo pot. Cochineal. This is a dye that is extracted from the insect of the same name. It can create various shades of reds and pinks and fibers. Today, the red color it produces is used mostly to dye foods and makeup.